This podcast is brought to you by India Knowledge at Wharton. Please visit knowledge.wharton.upenn.edu slash India for more information. India Imagine was the theme of the 2008 Wharton India Economic Forum that was held in Philadelphia recently. The day-long event attracted several leaders, including APJ Abdul Kalam, former president of India, as well as CEOs of Indian companies, nonprofit groups, consulting, and private equity firms. Indian Knowledge at Wharton brings you one-on-one conversations with these leaders. Today we are honored to have uh, the former president of India, uh, President APJ Abdul Kalam, to speak with us. President Kalam, thank you so much for joining us today. I am happy to be with happy to be with Wharton. Yes. Since our publication is called Knowledge at Wharton, I wonder if you could tell us something about knowledge. Well, I designed uh, uh, a four-line, uh, four-line uh, poem-like thing called creativity. I would have made at least million children repeat it. Okay, million children repeat. I will say, and they will repeat it. So I am going to tell you, say a few words about creativity. Uh, learning, learning gives creativity. Creativity leads to thinking. Thinking provides knowledge. Knowledge makes you great. So I am very happy. Uh, Watton, you are thinking of uh, uh, knowledge at Watton. It's a beautiful idea. My greetings to all of you. I wonder if you could start by talking about your past. Uh, you were born in Rameshwaram in 1931. What are the biggest differences you see between India as it was then and India today? Uh, well, I have uh, orbited around the sun 76 times. You know what it means? You're 76 years old. Uh, I correctly said it. <laughs> so... In uh, that 76 period, I have seen, uh, and when I was a young boy, the Second World War coming to an end. And uh, then uh, I saw the effect of uh, war and injuries, healing. Uh, I saw India attained the freedom 1915 when he was a schoolboy. I saw 15, 1947, uh, August 15, 1947, India achieving its freedom. It was a great, uh, happy moment. I have seen the economic ascent phase in India in 1991, 92. Ascent phase started. Till then we had a lot of difficulties. I have worked with um, visionaries like Professor Vikram Sarabhai, and Satish Dhawan, Dr. Brahm Prakash. I have seen a green revolution. I have seen white revolution. I have seen telecom revolution. And growth of ICT, that is information communication technology. And uh, I was involved in India's space program. It is one of our most successful programs in the country. And self-sufficiency in the strategic weaponry. You just spoke about your involvement with India's rocket program. In fact, I know that you were also very involved with India's missile program and that you earned the nickname the Missile Man of India. Could you please tell us about that experience and what the what were the main lessons you learned? Uh, well, it is like this. Uh, I work to Indian Space Research Organization uh, for about 20 years. Uh, there only we achieved the putting a satellite in the orbit, building a, a four-stage rocket system. Then I took up the integrated uh, guided missile program with my team. I means the team. And um, youthful teams were, uh, fortunately, were my team members. And they have uh, worked uh, together. And uh, we have a g- great value addition because the youth, youth, youth power and the program, particularly such a strategic missile program, um, uh, succeeded. 
and uh, the most important area is human resource development uh, so the program are uh, in safe hands now uh, i learned uh, uh, the one of the important thing in this programs uh, both space program missile program we should know how to handle the not only how to handle the success how to handle the failures particularly you are in the management environment watan it i want the young people to understand how to manage the failure because any task you do you have to come across problem problem should not become the captain of the individual or the project chief and uh, the project chief should become the captain of the problems and defeat the problem and succeed so this is what i have learned you played a key role in india's nuclear program in 1998 could you tell us a little bit about that well the main lesson i learned uh, was how uh, multiple technical teams and multiple departments of government of india could work together with the industrial partnership with the industrial partnership uh, that is a unique thing how many many people can well, many teams can work together get things done as a national need this is a, a it's a big experience i gained you are known to be a deeply spiritual person have you ever felt guilty or conflicted about developing nuclear weapons why or why not hmm. i realize that for my country's development peace is essential peace comes out of strength strength respect the strength peace uh, that is how uh, weaponized missiles were born so the only strength you need minimum strength to keep the nation peaceful and so that it, you can enter into the necessary developmental uh, missions that's how i i look at it how did you come to become india's president what leadership qualities do you think are needed to lead a country that is so huge so complex and so chaotic well i won't say chaotic uh, every uh, you know the type of uh, order comes out of disorder okay <laughs> this is what's happening now uh, i was elected as a president of india 2002 2007 yeah i through a well structured election process uh, now the leader not only for to become the president you need to give any political leadership or technological leadership uh, you have to have six traits uh, one leader should have and uh, what are the six traits number one leader must have a vision without a vision he will not be a leader he or she so leader must have a vision the second one leader must be able to travel it in into an unexplored path normally tendency to travel the you know well well laid out path but the leader he takes a path of untraveled path third thing leader must know how to manage success most importantly the failure uh any mission he does or she does so he has to go through some failure he sh- he, they should know how to manage the failures could you give us an example from your own experience about managing failure well in my own experience like this 1973 i was uh, i was became the project director for satellite launch vehicle program slv3 is called to put a roini satellite in the orbit by 1980 when the management structure i was given money i was given yeah and uh, then uh, human power i was given only they said by 1980 you must put the satellite in the orbit making a rocket so thousands of people worked for that say a scientific technical team so when the time came 1979 i think it's in august we launched uh, i was in the mission director project director i was the control center i was the mission director 
we handed over to the computer to do the process of checking the launch vehicle t minus 4 minutes and launch it after one minute uh, in the computer checkered computer put a hold uh, the, for some reasons they said uh, a display was there it had some some comp- component is not doing well control component my experts told me i have us always behind me four or five experts will be there and they quickly calculated the computer they told me don't worry there is a a lot of reserve fuel is there we, we will succeed so i went i bypassed the computer i went on manual launch the rocket system okay and um, it uh, is a four stage rocket system first stage worked beautifully as soon as the second stage separated it got into trouble in some satellite uh, going the orbit uh, the whole rocket system went into bay of bengal okay so it was a big uh, failure so that day uh, indian space research org chief prasatish davan there's a press con 7 o'clock we launched 7:45 there's a press con for the whole world press is there in sireri kota at launch base so i still remember the chairman of the organization the leader of the organization taking the press conference i was by his side he said uh, we have failed first time we tried to attempted and uh, this failure really makes us to believe we have to give more technological support my team and they worked very hard definitely in a year they will succeed so i was a mission director i was a project director i am responsible for the failure and uh, he took the responsibility of failure as a chairman of the organization and the lead of the organization next year 1980 july we succeeded the whole nation was jubilant there was a press conference prasatish davan told me you go and take the press conference okay the message is when the failure occurred the leader of the organization owned the leader the failure when the success came he gave to his team that the best management principle i have not learned previously any books have not taught me i learned from that experience okay that's a beautiful story thank you very much for sharing uh, that next one uh, fourth point leader must have a courage to take the decision that's our problem today throughout the world leader must have a courage to take the decision fifth one leader should have a nobility in management i mean nobility and management a big question mark so i believe leader should have a nobility in management every action of the leader should be transparent you know what i mean you say every that is leader should work with integrity and succeed with integrity leader should work with integrity and succeed with integrity and uh, i i believe president since you asked the question has to be continuously in touch with the people rashtrapati bhavan where uh, i i was uh, there became a people's bhavan instead of rashtrapati bhavan it becomes people's bhavan and also i travel into the old state cutting across hill deserts and see i was in touch with millions and millions of people you had a vision for india in 2020 it was that gradually the differences between the countryside and the cities would disappear could you please explain your concept of the pura and how that leads to this transformation i am glad you have uh, uh, you have uh, study in my website and uh, i have explained the pura concept uh, in the key note address i am going to do it today uh, briefly pura is about giving a cluster of villages physical electronic and knowledge connectivity so that the economic connectivity can emerge uh, we planned about 7000 puras for the whole nations and um, it called hill pura uh, coastal pura 
and Plainpura. And uh, this, we believe this system, um, the Pura system, will bring the economic connectivity. That means employment generation potential increases. And uh, the I believe through Pura, we, we are saying, and uh, employment generation capacity, empowering the people for employment, is indeed very vital in the rural environment so that prosperity will emerge. You have spoken about the need for India to become energy independent by the year 2030. How would that happen? I, you know, today all our fossil fuel dominating the energy sector throughout the world. The World Energy Forum predicts another five to eight decades the fossil fuel will vanish because it is not a renewable. So I have given to my country what is called energy independence. It's a three-dimensional approach. Number one, you go for solar power. Now solar power with uh, solar cell efficiency today, 15-20%, is not economical. So I have suggested we should go for a, a CNT carbon nanotube uh, composite combination. That efficiency will go up. The solar cell efficiency will go up in the CNT background to 45 to 55%. Many of the research institutions are busy. In three to five years' time, is going to come. So first is solar power uh, source. Second is in nuclear power. Since we have got a thorium, abundant thorium-based nuclear reactors, uh, definitely is one of the clean solution for the second area. Third year, the biofuel. Uh, Biofuel, one is a ethanol uh, route, another is uh, biodiesel, a jetrofar route. This combination, all the three, uh, definitely will, uh, will give a freedom uh, from, the, from the, uh, the fossil fuel. And also it is uh, going to have an environment, clean environment. Because by fossil fuel, the cars, what you drive here in water, what you drive in Philadelphia, what we drive in India, what we in New York, what we dry in London, all 30 billion tons of carbon dioxide we are pumping. So to come out of that, energy independence. Technology plays an important role in your vision for India's future. How do social grids help make India a developed country? Yeah. So what I believe the, is called societal grid. Societal grid has got uh, uh, three grids. Uh, one is uh, Pura grid, and the another is e-governance grid, another is health grid. The idea is that uh, knowledge grid empowers the uh, en empowers the um, the village citizens uh, with skill and knowledge. Health grid brings the uh, super speciality health care available in the city to the doorstep of the rural citizens. E-governance grid, another grid is called e-governance yeah, e grid, brings transparent governance, it's very important, but transparent governance uh, to the citizen. And also all these uh, four uh, grids, uh, the economic, it, it will lead to economic growth and societal transformation. Because communication in all areas are available. During your years as India's president, what was the biggest leadership challenge you faced? And how did you overcome it? Well, first time I had to return, return what is called Office of Profit Bill to the parliament. For the reason, I felt that there was a, no transparent system of determining a post as an Office of Profit are not. So that is a major decision because nobody, no, no, it's first time I happen to study that. I have to, I have to return it to the parliament for reconsideration. It created its own dynamics in my country, but I felt, I felt I had done the right thing there. If you could rewind and replay the years of your presidency, is there anything that you would do differently? Is there anything that you would have liked to do that you weren't able to? Yeah, I lost, you know, um, last year I come up, came up with the idea 
after finishing my four years term and fifth year term starting at that time i i felt i must completely power the rashtrapati bhavan with solar power and uh, for that i a big proposal also emerged and um, uh, but then it created a lot of environmental questions rashtrapati bhavan is a very clean environment with a lot of trees flowers and biodiversity centers so the environmental people they raise a lot of questions before i answer my term was over so <laughs> that's one one of the requirements that the rashtrapati bhavan should be a first home in the in the country uh, electrified by solar power one last question you are a gifted poet could you please recite some lines of your favorite poem for us i remember the favorite poem is the vision the vision um, i recited this poem in my parliament so i can i will share with you the poem goes like that the name is the vision i climbed and climbed where is the peak my lord i climbed and climbed where is the peak my lord i plowed and plowed where is the knowledge treasure my lord i plowed and plowed where is the knowledge treasure my lord i sailed and sailed where is the island of peace my lord i sailed and sailed where is the island of peace my lord almighty bless my nation with vision and sweat resulting into happiness resulting into happiness thank you very much it's been an honor speaking with you thank you for all the beautiful question my greetings to warton for more information please visit knowledge.warton.upen.edu/india